Hey guys, my name is Matt and welcome to the Game Gengo vocab series. In this video, we're going to be checking out Octopath Traveler 2, the prologue demo. You can download it right now yourself and you can play it for around three hours and kind of check out what it's like, whether this is a game you might be interested in, whether it's a game you might want to play in Japanese. And so that's what we're going to be doing today in this video. We're going to be checking out the demo and seeing what it's like to play Octopath Traveler 2 in Japanese. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down all of the Japanese that we come across so that you can learn Japanese no matter what level you are. Think of this kind of like a guided immersion where you can immerse in Japanese, expose yourself to language, learn a whole bunch of stuff. You don't have to memorize absolutely everything. This video is intended so that you can just comfortably be exposed to the Japanese language and learn it over time. However, if you want to see exactly what pieces of language you get covered in this video, check out the Game Gengo spreadsheet, link in the description. In this video, we're going to be covering a whopping 275 total words, with 141 of those being completely new. Putting our total covered words so far with this series at 3050, 18% of the entire JLPT. So without further ado, let's get into Octopath Traveler 2. Okay, so how does it start off? No way, I can pick the character I want to play as? No, that's got to be locked, right? Wait, I can start as him? Yo. What? Whoa, 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 I got, I got to go back, what? Holy moly, that's insane. How many characters can you choose from? She looked grayed out, so I thought maybe I couldn't choose her, but it seems I can pick every one of these characters to check out their demo. Oh, this is... Oh, no. <laughs> Amazing, this demo is top tier. What the hell? Okay, so I can play as uh, this cute girl who is a dancer. Hmm, she has a dancing ability. We have this kind of cool guy. He is a merchant of some description. We have, ooh, looks like a medic or a healer. Yes, she is a, a healer of sorts. Whoa, we have some sort of beast girl. This is kind of cool. A hunter, okay. Her name's Oshuto. That's kind of cool. I like her, she's cool. Ooh, she's cool. Ooh, an assassin, a thief. Very nice. We have a priest and we have some sort of scholar. Holy crap, oh, but he's imprisoned. Oh, that guy looks interesting. Oh no, what do I do? Oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is really, oh no. So you get three hours to play whichever one you want. You can replay again. You just have to delete your save and your save can carry over to when you buy the full game. But so what you could potentially do is play three hours of each of these characters. That means in this demo alone, you have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21 hours! Ah! And this guy! Oh my god! Oh, I'm definitely playing him! 21, 24 hours! You have 24 hours of free gameplay right here, all in Japanese! Wow! That is such a good... <laughs> that is so good! Holy... Ah, uh, uh, I feel like I wanna play him. Maybe I should just cover like one character per episode or something. Ah, uh, screw it, I'm gonna go with my typical heart. This is where my heart lies. I'm gonna go here with the warrior Hikari and I'm gonna check out his story. Oh, interesting. So this guy's name is actually Hikari Ku. <laughs> uh, and Ku is actually uh, one of the short ways of saying my wife's name. So that's really cool, the Ku Kuni. Okay, it's the, <laughs> it's the country for Ku's. Well, I will have to start with him now. This is just fate. All right, let's go with this guy. Let's see what his story is like. Yes, I would like to begin. So his sword is for the sake of his friends. Wow, I love the art style. So what's this kind of like Japan, China mixed together? Hikari. Oh, oh my god, already starting off with incredibly good news. This game is pushed to continue. So as you can see, it doesn't automatically play. You can take it at your own pace and you can hear the line and now break it down at your own speed. I wonder if there's some sort of like game script, uh, not game script, <laughs> uh, uh, log or something like that. Let's have a look. Um, okay, oh, we seem to have a menu. What's this? If I press up, we can see, oh, okay, so we can skip the menu, we can pause, we can have it just play automatically, and we can even fast forward it. Awesome. So that's great news. Um, what about some sort of 
that's unfortunate. So there doesn't appear to be any replayable logs. So that does make it a little bit less awesome, but this is definitely amazing, right? Because it means you can take it at your own pace. Uh, you've got Japanese language that you can hear. And for a demo for 24 hours of free gameplay, this is incredible. Hey guys, Future Matt here, sorry to interrupt, but I have some very, very good news. After playing a little bit more after recording this episode, I found out this game has replayable scenes. So at any point in the game, whenever you want, you can just open the menu it's the second choice in the menu here we have tabi no kiroku this means a recording of your adventures and you can go through any character any scene and replay it whenever you want it just treats these scenes like little cutscenes. you can replay at your own pace and play whenever you want so it's absolutely insanely good for a japanese language right now this really bumped it up a lot of levels you can't unfortunately replay the audio as you're playing but this is a very 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 good alternative not only that but you can even replay sub quests so there may be some interesting sub quests where you can replay them as well this is insanely good news absolutely mind-blowing this is so fantastic i'm so happy right now you can replay any scene whenever you want oh my god and you can take it at your own pace yes octopath traveler 2 is now a very 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 good game for learning japanese with thank you so much square enix ah oh, kami sama <laughs> okay back to the episode so let's have a look at the first sentence here so we first have kenshi ritsu so kenshi here just means a swordsman Ken represents the sword, and then she, we've already seen in previous videos, is kind of like the master of something. So here, a master of swords, a swordsman, right? That type of thing. So Kenshi Ritsu, so this guy's name is Ritsu, and we can see that my main character's name was also Kenshi Hikari, so he's also a swordsman. So these guys are kind of the story of swordsmen. Then we have Inoten no ka. Inoru is an N4 piece of vocabulary here, as we can see thanks to this dictionary that I'm using. Uh, if you want to have a look at the dictionary yourself, this is Lorenzi's Jisho, link in the description. Very, very cool uh, dictionary that I'm going to be using for this video and for this series as a whole. So, Inoru here is to pray or to wish for something. And we can see here that it's Inoten no ka. Here, the ten is actually short kind of slang for teru or teiru. You will often see in slang speech, the ru turns into a n in kind of slangish speech. So, this is actually Inoteru no ka or Inoteru no desu ka, right? Are you praying? The no ka is a question. So he's asking, Are you praying, Hikari? Inote no ka, Hikari. Yame to ke yo. Na koto ni imi ga aru nara. Ooh, I like the voice acting already. It's very nice. So the first piece of language we have is Yame to ke. So as we can see, yameru is to stop something, but it's yame toke. And this is another really cool thing about this dictionary. If you just type yame toke into a dictionary sometimes, it won't actually show you what the pieces are. So you might actually get confused, like what verb is this? You might be confused. But if you have a look in the dictionary right here, it actually breaks down the conjugation if you type the full thing in. So we can see it's yameru in the te form and then followed by toku. So this is te oku to do something in advance. So he's saying stop in advance. So this means he's kind of warning him to stop it, right? Stop it or else, you know, just so nothing bad happens in the future, right? It's kind of a little bit of suggestion, a little bit of advice. He's giving advice saying stop it. So yame toke yo. Stop it. Na koto ni imi ga aru nara dot dot dot. So this na koto the na part here is actually an abbreviation of sonna, as we can see here in the dictionary. And this means such or in that way, right? That kind of thing, like that. So like that, sonna koto, but it's just a casual way of saying it. So na koto, koto here is referring to a thing. So a thing like that, a thing like praying, this is what he's referring to. Na koto ni imi ga aru nara. Imi, I believe we've already covered many, many times. This is an N5 piece of language, meaning the meaning of something. So imi ga aru means there is meaning in that kind of thing. Sonna koto ni imi ga aru. So to have meaning in such kind of thing. And then it's finishing off with nara. And this is a hypothetical, if it's the case. So if it's the case that there's meaning in such a thing, dot, dot, dot. So stop it. If there's meaning in doing such a thing, then... Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, okay, already a bit of a dark start so far. So the first part we have is 
So Soitsura, that just means those guys. Soitsu is like Aitsu, but it's over there, that guy. And then the Ra is pluralizing this. So those guys. Soitsura wa, as for those guys, Suna no naka ni ime. Suna is sand, and I believe this is actually a new piece of language for the whole series, and this is an N4 piece of vocabulary. We can see it's a very common piece of language with the top 3000 anime drama, top 3000 news, top 3000 Wikipedia. Very, very useful word. This is the word for sand, right? Suna. So anytime you see sand like a sandy beach, Suna is the word that's used. So Suna no Naka, this means inside the sand. So Suna the sand, no is the possessive particle, and then Naka is inside. So the inside of the the sand, right? That's kind of a way of looking at it, or inside the sand. Suna no naka ni, so the ni particle is expressing a kind of something happening in the inside of the sand, and then ine. Ine is just the more casual way of saying inai, and this is the negative form of iru, to exist for living things, so here referring to people. So as for those guys, they aren't inside the sand, so perhaps referring to the dead people, like there was kind of a graveyard that he was perhaps praying to, and he's saying, you know, they're not inside that sand. Imagoro, keo nigiteru. Imagoro is a very useful piece of language that expresses around now. Here we can see about this time. Ima means right now, and then goro is like around, so around now, about this time. Imagoro, so around now, keno nigiteru. And we know ken means the sword, we already saw that in kenshi. And then nigiru here, this is the verb to grasp something, to hold something, to clutch something, right? So it's very much in your hands, it has that kind of feeling. And we can see it can also be things like seizing power, but it has the same thing, right? Seizing power in your hands, that kind of thing, right? Nigiru. Uh, this is actually the word that's used with onigiri. Uh, this is actually connected in the same way. It's kind of like in your hands. Uh, so it's a very, very useful uh, piece of language right here. And it's connected to a lot of things in Japanese. Oh, we can even see that in definition number four, how to make nigiri sushi. So there you go. Uh, it's the same kind of thing. Um, so here, nigiru is to grasp in one hand. And what are we grasping? Ken, sword. Ken o nigiteru. So those guys aren't in the sand. Right about now, they're holding swords in their hands. So it's Ooh, I love the voice actors. Nice and uh, expressive, very nice. So, inotte nado inai. So, we know that inoru is to pray, and then we have nado, and this just means the likes of. So, the likes of praying, inotte nado inai. And this inai might trip some people up because it's like, huh, is he talking about doesn't exist? But this is actually connected to inotte, inotte inai, I'm not praying. But inote nado inai is kind of expressing like I'm not doing something like praying. So we can see here it's actually put in the middle of the te form and the teiru part, right? Te inai. So inote nado inai. I'm not doing such a thing as praying. Tada. This means simply or only here in definition number four. Tada kangai teita. And kangairu is the incredibly common piece of language at N4 to think about something. So here kangai teita just means I was thinking. So if we put it all together, I wasn't doing such a thing as praying. I was just thinking. Inotte nado inai. Tada kangai teita. Onaji risou wo mune ni shinda mono tachi ga iru to. So far the language hasn't been too difficult, so onaji just means the same, and then the same what? Onaji riso. This means the same ideals. So onaji riso o mune ni. Mune is the chest. This word is also used when talking about breast, like for example breasts, <laughs> but also like just chicken breast when you buy chicken breast at the supermarket, things like that. Um, and it can also be here number six, heart, mind and feelings. And that's really how he's using it right here, because we're talking about ideals, riso. So Riso isn't usually actually in your chest. It's not usually actually in your breast. <laughs> it's in your kind of heart, right? And that's here being expressed with mune. So this is kind of like kokoro, right? Inside your heart. Onaji riso o mune ni. The same ideals in your heart. Shinda monotachi. So shinu, here is the verb to die. And this is modifying monotachi. The people who died. Shinda monotachi ga iru to. Iru we know is to exist. And the to here is actually quoting what he kangaiteta. What he thought. 
so he was thinking about those who died with the same ideals in their heart. So we've seen this phrase already when we first started choosing this character, Kono Kenwa, as for this sword, so he's referring to his sword, and then we have Tomo no Tameni. And Tomo is actually the single version of Tomodachi for a friend, but this is just used for like kind of a friend, right? It's here, a friend, a companion, a comrade. So Tomo no Tameni, this means for the sake of a friend. So as for this sword, for the sake of my friend. Kono Kenwa, Tomo no Tameni. Oh, okay, so he seems to be a prince. So let's have a look at the sentence he says here. So first he says, Jikan da. Jikan just means time, and then da is expressing it is. But this has a kind of like explanatory tone to it. It's quite strong, right, when you're really stating something. So it is time, Jikan da. And then he says, Oji dono. Oji here is actually a prince. So o, that's a king, and then ji is like a child from ko. Kodomo. So, Oji, like the kingly child, right? The prince. Oji Dono. This is actually a polite way to refer to someone in kind of historical settings. Something you would put towards someone in a high status. Whereas nowadays you don't really use it too much. It has a very much feel of like a Jedi Geki, like a historical setting, right? The Dono. It's kind of similar to San and Sama and things like that. Um, but here, Dono is being used with Orgy for a prince. So he's kind of like saying, in a polite way, he's referring to the prince. And so he says, it's time, prince. Let's go, Ritz. Let's go, Ritz. Oh, we've got a battle. Awesome. Oh yeah, this is my kind of setting. <laughs> oh sweet, even in the battle it waits for you. That's awesome. So if there's dialogue in the battle, you don't have to worry too much. The game just waits for you. That's amazing. Okay, let's have a look at the first piece of language here. Bibin nayo. So again, we're actually seeing that casual contraction of the ru here because this is bibiru. This means to be scared. We've actually seen this in the Final Fantasy VIII episode. If you watch that, bibiru is to be scared, right? Cypher was talking to Zell saying bibin nayo, right? Don't get scared. So we see it again here. Bibin nayo. Don't get scared, hikari. Bibin nayo, hikari. <laughs> Sono mama kaesu. Sono mama kaesu. So sono mama means just like that. Here sono means that and then ma is without change. It's kind of staying in that way. It's staying in that state. So sono mama just staying in that state. This is very similar to the expression you may have seen in Nier Automata. Kono mama ja dame, right? If it continues on like this, it's no good. Here sono mama means like that. Staying like that. So sono mama kaesu. And kaesu is an N5 piece of language here to say to return something. So here he is returning returning just like that. So in a way, he's returning his words back to him, right? He said, don't get scared, bibin nayo. And he said, I return those words right back at you, right? So, sono mama kaesu. I could say the same thing to you. <laughs> sono mama kaesu. Ore wa nari agaru na. Ten ni todoku kurai. Ue made. Oh wow, okay, I'm, I'm getting a lot of like kingdom vibes from this particular story. Definitely a kind of kingdom, if you've seen the anime or the manga, that kind of setting. Uh, so this is very much kind of feeling like China, very China uh, focused, but I can see some Japanese influences. So it's very much like kind of a China-Japan mixed uh, country here called Ku. Ore is the kind of masculine way of referring to oneself very manly, right? So ore wa, as for me. And then he says, nari agarunda. And nari agaru here is to kind of rise in ranks. You're rising to a higher position in life or in the world, like the kind of social standings. So he's saying that I will rise up, right? I will rise to higher rankings in life. I will make it, right? So perhaps we are in a world here where being a good soldier will mean you have a better life. And so he's saying, you know, I'm going to rise up in this world. Ore wa nari agarunda. Ten ni todoku kurai. 
ten is like the heavens. Ten ni to the heavens, and then we have todoku. Now todoku has lots of different meanings. It could be, for example, to deliver something, but here it more means to reach, to attain something, to get to a certain level, right? So to reach the heavens, ten ni todoku. Could I? To the extent that I will reach the heavens. Could I is used when you're talking about the extent of something. So much that, right? I will rise up so much that. I will rise to the extent that I will reach the heavens. Ue made da. So ue, you often see meaning kind of above the top, and this is the kind of summit, right? The very highest point, right? We're talking about reaching the heavens. And so ue, the very top made until. So he's saying, I will keep rising all the way to the heavens, right to the very top. Oh man, the vibes, I'm loving the music so far, it's so hype. And this is definitely my kind of vibes. I picked the right one for me for the first one. Konna jibetta de shinde tamaru ka yo. Konna means like this. We've already kind of seen this language before, like sonna, konna. Konna jibetta de. Jibetta, as we can see, is a relatively rare piece of language. It doesn't have any kind of JLPT ranking and it's in the top 22,000 in anime and drama. So perhaps this is something that's used in this kind of scenario, right? Where you have warriors talking about the earth, right? Right? We can see here the bare earth, the ground, and we can see it's a colloquialism that's kind of referring to jimen, jimen meaning the ground. That's a more normal way of using it, right? Jimen. But here, jibetta is referring to the ground right here. A little bit more of a rarer use of it. So, konna jibetta de, on this ground. De, remember, marks the spot of action. Shinu, to die, and then shinde, tamaru. So tamaru here is to bear or to endure something, and when it's used after the te form of a verb, it's showing that you are enduring that action, right? But we have followed with kayo, and that's kind of like an as if. So you could look at this shinde tamaru kayo as almost like as if I would endure dying in a place like this, right? That kind of thing. This may sound a little bit strange, but actually this tamaru is actually connected to tamara nai. This means you can't allow something to happen. We can see this being explained on Yahoo questions when you Google this in Japanese. You can see that someone actually explained in Japanese that te tamaru is saying zettai ni dun 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 shinai means I definitely won't do something, right? So as if I would die in a place like this. I will definitely not die in a place like this. So, konna jibetta de shinde tamaru ka yo. As if I die in a place like this. Konna jibetta de shinde tamaru ka yo. Kokoro ziyo ni naritsu. Susumu zo. Kukoku no tame ni. I really like his voice actor, it's not a voice I've heard too often, that's nice to kind of finally get some new voices. It's often like voice actors in Japan are often voiced by the same people over and over again. So he starts off with kokoro zioi na. So kokoro zioi is actually a pretty useful word, even though apparently it's in the N1, we can see it's in the top 7,000 words for anime and drama. That means that it's definitely something that you should know. If something's in the top 10,000, it's definitely something you should know. So kokoro zioi is a very common word that means heartening or reassuring, right? Kokoro is your heart. We actually, I just mentioned that. And then zioi here means strong. So kokoro zioi, this means it's kind of reassuring. It strengthens your heart. Heart. It's heartening. So, kokoro zioi na. That's reassuring. Ritsu. Susumu zo. So, susumu just means to advance, to keep going, to proceed, right? Susumu zo. Zo is just a very emphatic way, of, often seen in anime and drama. Susumu zo. Let's advance. Let's keep going. Kukoku no tame ni. And we know kukoku means the country of ku, and then no tame ni for the sake of. So, that's reassuring, Ritz. Let's proceed. For the sake of Ku country. So we know Kono Mama just like this, so just like we are doing right now, Susumuzo. Let's keep going. Kono Mama Susumuzo, Bits! Oh! Oh! Yes! Oh! 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 Oh!
Oh, I'm pretty sure that's Gintama, <laughs> the voice of Gintama right there. Okay, let's have a look at this new character here that's totally not Gintama. Okay, so first, this guy's name is Gunshi Kazan. So Gunchi here is a strategist. This is something you will often see in kind of military games and kind of these ancient war games, that type of thing. Gunchi is a really common word that we see and we can see it's in the top 8K uh, for anime and drama. And that's because this is something you see so often, right? This setting in anime and drama, very, very common. So that's why it's so common. Gun means a kind of army and she here is kind of the master of something. It's kind of you know, often seen with tacticians. So here a strategist or a tactician is a Gunchi. And he starts off with a nice, healthy yosh. <laughs> this is a very common piece of language you'll see as top 500, oh my god, anime and drama. This is just like yoi or e, meaning good, right? But yosh is like, all right, yosh, looking good, yosh. Hikari dono no katsuyaku de. So, hikari dono no, so hikari dono is something, and then katsuyaku here is an N2 piece of language used to talk about the kind of efforts of someone, right? The activity, the doings of someone, right? Their, their hard work. Hikari dono no katsuyaku de, so with the activity, with the work of hikari, teki ga, teki here being the opponent, hirunda. So hirumu here means to falter, to flinch, to recoil from something. So this means that the enemy has faltered, the enemy has flinched. So, all right, thanks to Hikari Dono's efforts, the enemy has flinched or the enemy has faltered. Yoshi. Hikari Dono no katsuyaku de teki ga hirunda. Ima koso kouki desu. Oh man, look at that cool looking shogun guy there on the horse. I wonder if he's going to turn into a bad guy. He's pretty cool. And that other guy definitely looks like some sort of strategist as well. Ima koso, koki desu. Ima we know means now and then koso is adding emphasis to something. So now is the time. Ima koso, koki desu. And koki just means a good opportunity. The first kanji often representing good and the second kanji often representing opportunity. So it's a very good match. Good opportunity. Corky this. So, yay, we have some polite speech. So, no longer kind of the rough, crude speech of the previous guys that we saw, the warriors. Now we have more of a strategist who talks a little bit more politer. So, here we see that with the des. So, now is the time. This is a great opportunity. But maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at this Shogun Mugen. So first up, Shogun. This is probably a piece of language that most of you may have already seen at some stage in your life, uh, or even just heard in English, Shogun or something like that. Shogun, Shogun, I think that's how they say it in English. <laughs> shogun, right? This means the general of an army. So that's what a Shogun is. This is a historical term. So Shogun Mugen here is talking about the general of this army known as Mugen. His name is Mugen, and Mugen actually means infinite, so that's kind of interesting. So he's the infinite general, <laughs> but you wouldn't literally look at his name, but that's just kind of funny. So his name is General Mugen, and he says, Tokiwa Kita. We've already seen one word meaning time, that was Jikan, but now we have Toki. Very, very similar. Here, just used by itself, Tokiwa, as for the time, Kita. And this is just the past tense form of Kuru, to come. So, the time has come, Tokiwa Kita. The time has come. I'm pretty convinced he's gonna betray me just by the sound of this guy's voice, but he's the shogun of my country. Uh, so, oh, maybe that might be what happens, right? Maybe I'm the prince, right? Maybe where there's some sort of like military upheaval and they take over the country. <laughs> I'm just guessing, right? Okay, let's have a look at what the shogun says. Wareda kukoku ga. So, ware can be me, and then wareda, we know that ra adds the plural to something, so us. Wareda kukoku, us, the ku country ga. So, we're going to be doing something, and then we have sabaku. This is actually a combination of the kanji that we saw previously, suna, for sand, but now it's with sabaku. And the last kanji kind of represents vast. So, the vast sand means a desert, sabaku. Sabaku no hake o nigiru toki da. 
So, oh my god, this is actually what I've never seen before. Um, I'm quite surprised. It says it's in the top 7,000 news word. This is actually something I've personally never seen before, so I clearly don't watch the news very often. <laughs> this means a hegemony. To be honest, I don't even know what that means in English. <laughs> I'm guessing it's some sort of like family. Now you may be a very smart person and you know what a hegemony is. I have no idea. So what I personally do is I just look up this word in Japanese into Google and just have a look and see what the simple Japanese explanation says. Oh, interesting. Okay. So we see that it is the power of someone that's kind of like the supreme ruler, almost like a dictatorship, right? Someone who possesses the complete power of control of something. So, ooh. Maybe I was actually right with my thoughts that he's going to be trying to take over the kingdom. <gasps> Maybe these guys aren't my allies. They were watching the battle and these guys are going to kill me. Oh no. So the Sabaku no Haken means the hegemony of the desert or Nigiru Tokida. The time to take it into our hands. So we still don't know, are these good guys, bad guys? I'm not sure. But here, Shogun Mugen says, Now is the time for us of Ku Country to grasp the hegemony of the desert. <laughs> Oh, nice. We actually almost know all of the language in here. We only have a couple of pieces that we're not too sure of. So, Mugen Dono ga. So, we know he's referring to the Shogun as Mugen Dono. We know what Dono means. So, politely speaking to Mugen ga Hiki Iru. So, Hiki Iru is an N1 piece of language to mean to command something. So, obviously, he's a Shogun. So, if he's a general, he's going to be commanding something. This is the word. This is the verb right here to command something. Hiki Iru. So, Mugen Dono ga Hikiru no wa. So, as for what Mugen Dono is going to be commanding, Ku Koku ga. So, what the country of Ku does. And then we have Hokoru, Saikyo no He. Now, I believe we've seen this already a few times in this playlist. So if you've watched every video, you may have seen this, but Hokoru is to be proud of something, have pride, right? N1 piece of language, but still very useful. As you can see, there's lots of N1 that's super useful. Top 2000 wiki, top 5000 anime and drama, in the top 10,000 for news. Just because it's in the N1 doesn't mean you shouldn't know it. <laughs> Here, Hokoru is to be proud of something. So Kukoku ga Hokoru, that means what the Ku country is proud of. And then Saikyo no He. Saikyo means the strongest. And what is the strongest? He. A soldier. So the very strongest soldiers, right? Sai means the utmost. Kyo is strength. And He is a soldier. So Saikyo no He. The very strongest of the soldiers. Now, one interesting thing just to quickly have a look at is look how common He is. It's in the top 1,000 anime and drama. Top 1,500 news. Top 500 Wikipedia and the JLPT nowhere to be seen. This is something I would really like a lot of people to just kind of be a little bit more aware of. The JLPT is not the be all and end all ranking system for language that what's important and what's not important. As we've already seen, there is a lot of language in the N1 that's very useful and yet it's hidden away at the utmost highest levels. Some of this stuff you should know even as a very complete beginner. So don't be too scared about kind of seeing bits and pieces of the N1, N2, N3, even if you're only at the N5 level. I don't personally believe that you need to hold yourself back, right? And that's kind of what this whole vocab series is all about. It's kind of trying to help you expose you to all of this language in a kind of fun, more relaxed setting. Because honestly, you should know things like hey, even if it's not in the JLPT. If you just studied the JLPT, you would have to finish the N1 before you then start looking outside of the JLPT and finally come across this incredibly useful word. <laughs> right now, obviously that's not how it works, but if you were to hold yourself back, that's the kind of limitations you could have. So I really believe in just kind of looking at languages exactly how it is. And it's just so much more fun doing it this way. So even if it's not the JLPT, absolutely essential piece of language right here, of course. So as for the soldiers that General Mugen commands, the country of Ku boasts them to be the strongest soldiers. Ooh, okay, we have a bit of strategy going on. Let's have a look at a little bit of challenging pieces of language we have here. Arekuru. This means to rampage, to go wild, to go berserk. And this is really referring to like the soldiers in chaos. Arekuru 
Kaze to nari. Kaze is a super useful piece of language, the wind uh, N5 piece of language. So I think this may even be the first time we've seen it in the whole uh, vocab series so far. So that's pretty amazing. Um, this is the wind to nari. This means to become. So to become the kind of rampaging wind. Are kuru kaze to nari. And then we have minami no gunze o chirashimashou. Minami is the word for south, north, south, east, west. South is Minami. Minami no Gunze. This is the military forces. We already know Gun is the army, and Ze is kind of like the forces, the number of people. So Gunze is the military forces. Minami no Gunze, so the southern military forces. Oh, so we're doing something to those forces, and then we have Chirashimashou. So Chirasu in Chirashimashou, this is to scatter or to disperse, to spread out something. So here we are scattering, dispersing the Minami no Gunze, the southern military forces. And this is expressed here with the O particle. That's what we are doing, the Chirasu too. That's what we're scattering. And then masho is kind of like let's. So again, he speaks in a very formal way. He's using the must form. So here he says, become the berserking wind and scatter the southern forces. So I'm still not sure whether they're good guys or bad guys, but they kind of look bad. So, uh... <laughs> そして and this is often when you're kind of connecting two sentences and then そして Corby. Oh, this is a very rare piece of language. My God, this may be the rarest piece of language we've come across in the entire series so far, at least with this particular ranking that we can see according to Lorenzi's Jisho, the top 62,000. Well, I guess if it's not ranked, it may be rarer, <laughs> right? But in the rankings, this is a pretty rare one. Uh, it's not too difficult to understand. Core just means behind and B is often like a tail. So the rear right? The behind tail, right? The behind tail of the enemy forces, that kind of thing. So Corby is in the rear. De is marking the place of action. So Corby de, in the rear. Kiyo ukagao. So ki, we already know, means opportunity, and we see it finally being used here by itself. So we're doing something to opportunity in the rear, and this next thing is ukagao. This is the action that he's going to be doing, and this is to await one's chance. So we can see it literally is await a chance because it's kiyo Ukagao. This is the word in definition number two, to await one's chance. So, very literally, and then in the back, wait for your chance. So, suna tachi, suna is the sand, tachi is those sand guys, ga, iki ni, this means all in one go, right? So, iki ni nomu, right? <laughs> all in one go, but here it's iki ni nagare hairu. Now, Nagare haidu isn't something that I could find in any dictionary, but it's not too difficult to understand. Nagare is to flow and then haidu is to enter, so it's like to flow into. And we can actually see that it's actually a different way of saying nagare komu, to flow into. So it's the same kind of thing here. So thank you goo.ne for always helping us out, that's a very useful website right there. So. As we can see, we have the strategist talking strategy. So he's saying, you know, rush in like your kind of hurricane of chaos and stuff, make the enemy routed, and then wait for your chance. Those sand guys will come flowing in all in one go. I sure hope they're on my side, because they sound like they got some strategy. <laughs> Okay, we've got some difficult language all of a sudden. Uh, this guy, you know, they're speaking strategy and stuff. Definitely a lot more difficult language, but a very interesting way of speaking, that's for sure. So the first part he says is, Kaze ga hiraku michi o. So kaze we know is wind, ga, the wind is doing something, and then hiraku. This is a very rare use of kanji for hiraku. Hiraku, when you hear that, you think, hey, that means open, right? And you're correct, it does mean open. But this particular use of this kanji, it kind of means to kind of clear open, like to open a path, clear away, that type of thing. So here, kaze ga, the wind is going to, 
Hiraku Michi. Michi means the road, the way. So Hiraku Michi, the way that's been opened up, the path that's been opened up. Oh, Sunaga Mao no desu. The sooner the sand will dance, or here to kind of flutter about, to revolve. So this is kind of to be like, whoa, that kind of thing. So the wind will open the path and the sand will dance. So he's talking in a kind of eloquent, kind of strategic way of talking, kind of metaphorical way, but very literal as well, right? The wind of chaos that he was referring to previously. Then we have Teki Shore. Now, you already know all of these pieces, but we haven't seen them put together yet. Teki means the enemy, and Shaw, this was from Shogun, if you remember the general of the army. So here, Teki Shaw is the enemy general. Teki Shaw, Homuru Made. Man, I don't think I've seen this word used in like anime or manga since I've read like Naruto in Japanese. I remember Gara using this word. And this is to kind of entomb, to bury someone in something. That's what Gara used to do, in bury them in sand. And that's actually being used here as well, because burying the Tekigun or Homuru Made until the enemy general has been entombed in sand. So if we put it all together, the path that the wind opens up the sand will dance until the enemy shogun is buried. Yeah, I'm actually pretty high, pretty cool already. You're hearing some strategy, it's pretty cool. Um, Kazan, so he's referring to um, the strategist directly by his name. And actually, uh, the strategist did as well. So they seem to be kind of on even levels. Kazan, Aimo Kawarazu. And Aimo Kawarazu is exactly the same as Ai Kawarazu. As always, as usual. But this is just a little bit more of a rarer way. We can actually see it's often used in a scornful way as well. So, Aimo Kawarazu Migotona Sakuda. And Migotona is a na adjective that's saying that something is splendid. So, what is splendid? That is Saku. Another relatively common piece of N1 language here for a plan or a strategy. Some sort of scheme, you know, something that you've been kind of planning. Here, Saku is referring to the strategy of the strategy. So, Migotona Saku means a splendid strategy. And again, we can see it's a very useful piece of language. Top 3000, top 6000. Don't worry about it saying N1. Strategy. Not too hard. Saku means strategy. Often seen in words like Sakusen. So, Kazan. As always, a splendid strategy. Kazan. Ai mo kawarazu Migotona Saku da. And then he says, Senjo no subete o. So, Senjo is just the battlefield. We've seen this plenty of times already, definitely in the Berserk vocab video. Uh, sen, battle, jo, place. So, the battlefield. Senjo no subete. This means everything. We can see it's using the kanji, but you often see it just used in hiragana, like in the dictionary definition. Very useful piece of language, very, very useful piece. This is the most important piece of language for saying everything. Subete o. So doing something to everything, and senjo no subete, so all of the battlefield, and then mi tosu. So mi is to look, and then tosu is actually going through something, right? Tosu, going through it. So to see through. And what are we seeing through? Well, it's marked with the o particle. Senjo no subete o. So seeing through the whole battlefield. Sono me. And me here is for an I. Now, as we can see, this is using the non standard reading for me, but this is also another kanji for me for eyes. So, sono me, those eyes. So, senjo no subete o mi tosu, sono me, those eyes that see through everything on the battlefield. Sasuga wa kukoku no washi yo. So sasuga is a super common piece of language to be like, as you would expect, like if you have some sort of like presumption about someone, how they are, like how they're supposed to be, and then they act in that way, it's kind of like, ah, oh, sasuga, right? As I would expect, right? So as expected, sasuga wa. But we can see that this actually uses kanji for sasuga. So this actually isn't too rare and technically it's N2. Um, so it's a bit higher level. You do see this written in both hiragana and kanji. I see it used in kanji a lot, especially with the type of games I play. So that's the kanji for Sasuga. Sasuga wa. So as for, as you would expect, 
Kukoku no washi yo. And washi here is the word for an eagle. Now, you do often see it written in hiragana. The kanji is actually quite difficult, but as we can see here, it's being used the kanji for an eagle. So this is washi. Washi means an eagle, not washi for a pronoun, just washi by itself, an eagle. Those eyes that see through the entire battlefield, as expected, the eagle of Ku. And then he says this interesting expression, gobun o. So this is a tricky piece of language if you were to look it up on a dictionary, it may not make too much sense, but bu is like military, un is luck. It says fortunes of war, but it's more like luck in the battlefield, right? So to do well in battle. Now, if you've noticed, this phrase has just finished in the ought particle, and this is kind of like expressing hoping something, right? In a way, may you have fortune in war, that type of thing. This ought is used in the same thing in may the force be with you, that ought is at the very end of the sentence as well. So here, gobun or may you have fortune in battle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like these characters so far. Uh, so, ikusa ni unado nai. So, ikusa is the word for a battle. We've already seen sen, that's another way, but here, ikusa, when read just by itself, this is referring to a war, a battle. Ikusa ni, so in battle, unado. So, we already know un means luck. Nado, hopefully you remember, things like. So, such a thing as luck, un nado nai doesn't exist. So there's no such thing as luck in battle. Aru no wa. Aru is to exist, no wa, as for what is. So as for what exists, aru no wa. Chikara no mi. Chikara is strength. No mi means only. So only strength. So as for what is in battle, aru no wa. Chikara no mi. Only strength. So put it all together. Ikusa ni un nado nai. There's no such thing as luck in battle. Aru no wa chikara no mi. What does exist is only strength. Ikusa ni un nado nai. Aru no wa chikara no mi. Jakusha no shikabane no ue ni kyouja ga shiro o kizuku no da. Man, the more I hear about these guys, I'm feeling like they're definitely not on my side. <laughs> Jakusha means the weak. Jaku is like yowai, jaku, weak, sha, mono, people. So those who are weak, jakusha. Jakusha no shikabane, this means the corpse. So the corpse of the weak. Oh my god. Uh, this guy, anyone who would say the corpse of the weak, <laughs> I don't think is a good guy. So jakusha no shikabane no ueni, on top of the corpses of the weak. Kyosha, the strong. This is the antonym of jakusha, the opposite. So strong people, kyosha ga. So the strong are who will, shiro o. So shiro here is a castle, kizuku. This is to build, to construct. This is an N1 piece of language for building. The normal one would be like tsukuru or something like that to build. But here kizuku is to build, to construct, to erect. So the strong will erect castles on top of the bodies of the weak. So definitely a nice guy. Yeah, nice guy. Jakusha <laughs> Man, this guy has a lot of difficult language, so here he says Fukisusabe. So here this is an incredibly rare piece of language again, I think this even topped the ranking of the last really rare word. This is to blow fiercely, to play a flute for fun, to rage on. <laughs> so he's saying RAGE ON! Kukoku no Suna Arashi. So Kukoku, the country of Ku no Suna Arashi. We, we know already Suna, we've seen many times sand. Arashi is a storm, so a sandstorm. The sandstorm of Ku. So let us blow violently. The sandstorm of Ku. Kukoku no Suna Arashi yo! Let's go! 
Hopefully you guys are my friends, please. You guys are really cool. Uh, I think they're... Yeah, they're the bad guys, right? Oh yeah, I love you! Gesen na here is a very, very, very rude, ultra rude na adjective. This is talking about someone of low birth, right? Someone who is low, vulgar, really, really, really low, right? Gesen na Minami no Tami Domo me. Minami we know means south, so Minami no Southern Tami, the people. But he doesn't just stop with tummy, he says tummy domo me. So domo here pluralizes the tummy, so the citizens, but it's kind of a rude way of doing it. And then me is another way of looking down on. So like you damn southerners, that type of thing, right? Gese na minami no tummy domo me. You damn southerners. Chikara no sao misete kureyo. We know that chikara means power, but here sa means the difference in power. Chikara no sa. Sa here for the difference. Chikara no sa o, so do something to the difference in power. Misete kureyo. So this is show me. Show me the difference in power. Gesen na minami no tami tomo me. Chikara no sa o misete kureyo! He's annihilating them! Please be my friend! Kishin no gotoki tsuyosa. Woohoo! So the teki hair, the enemy soldier, here he says, Kishin no gotoki tsuyosa. So Kishin here is like a fierce god. This is a very rare piece of language. I don't know why this is top 13,000. This is crazy rare. Uh, but it makes sense. It's not too difficult, right? Ki here is from Oni, like a demon, and then Shin is a god. So like a demon god, a fierce god. Kishin no Gotoki, this means the likes of, or the same as. <laughs> now, I'm not sure about the ranking here. I I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it because I guess Gotoki by itself is relatively rare, but you may have already have seen this piece of language being used before. If you've heard of the Yakuza series, in Japanese that's known as Ryuga Gotoku. And that's the same here as Gotoki, but it's Gotoku. It's just a different conjugation. So, like a dragon. That's what the Yakuza series is called in Japanese. The same as a dragon. Like a dragon. Here, like a fierce god. Kishin no Gotoki. Tsuyosa. And Tsuyosa is just the noun for Tsuyoi. Strong. Strength. So the strength of a fierce god! Kishin no Gotoki Tsuyosa! Arega Kukoku no Akaki Yoroi. Mugen Shogun. Arega Kukoku no Akaki Yoroi. So Arega, that is Kukoku, the Ku countries. Akaki means red, it's just a different kanji, kind of like crimson. And then yoroi, this is the armor. So the crimson armor, Akaki yoroi. The crimson armor, Mugen Shogun, General Mugen. So I'm getting the vibes that these guys are actually on my side because they we seem to be fighting those um, gray guys and that's who I fought before. So hopefully they don't betray me, please don't. Because <laughs> that guy is going to be uh, pretty cool, but then he would be a really cool bad guy to fight, but it'd be an even cooler ally, right? Agiha! <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, that's interesting. I'm not too sure why he just screamed Ageha. Uh, this is the word for a butterfly. In particular, a swallowtail butterfly. So I'm really not too sure. Maybe that's the name of one of his comrades. Maybe like an archer or something. Ageha! No, it's the name of some guy. Oh, it's him. Oh, okay, he's Ageha. <laughs> Zejaku means weak or fragile. I believe we've seen this word already before in a couple of videos. Sono tedo ka. Sono like that. And then tedo is the extent of something, the degree. So to that extent. Sono tedo. That extent. Sono tedo ka. Is that it? Minami no tami domo yo. So you damn southerners, is that it? Zejaku na.
red. Oh, that's interesting. So when my map is like white, but when I'm holding a run button, it's red. So that means it might actually actually be like stealth situations in the game. We have to like stealth past people. That's pretty cool. Ah, oh, this game is so cool. That's definitely my allies, and I'm definitely in trouble! Oh no! <laughs> so he says, Saji Buntai Cho. So Buntai is a squad, and then Cho is the leader. So Buntai Cho means the leader of a squad. So he had some sort of squad leader that just got killed behind him, and now he's on his own with his friend. So he screams, Saji Buntai Cho. So the guy's name was Saji. Saji Buntai Cho! Hikari, furikairu na, susume. So, furikairu is like, look back, and he says, susume. So, let's keep going. All right, let's keep going. Hikari, furikairu na, susume. Hikari, kuru zo. Kuru zo, they're coming, Hikari. Hikari, kuru zo. Who's this? Rai Mei. Hikari Bujika. So Buji means safe. So are you safe, Hikari? Hikari Bujika. Wale ra wa kedakaki kukoku no suna. Hirumazu mai tsukeru no da. Okay, and so this Rai Mei, she says wale ra wa. So as for us, kedakaki. So kedakaki comes from Kedakai. This means to be noble, high-minded. We can see that the eat form of an adjective turns into ki in kind of archaic speech. So here, kedakaki, kukoku, so the noble ku country, not suna. So we are the sand of the noble ku country. Ah, so this is the sand that they were talking about crushing. And then she says, hirumazu. Mai tsuzukeru no da. Now we know hiromu is to falter or to flinch, but here it's in the zu form without doing something, the negative continuative, right? Without faltering, without flinching, mai tsuzukeru. Now we know mai means to dance or it could be to kind of go around, like, you know, in a whirl around, like that kind of sand doing that. Tsuzukeru is to continue. So here following another verb means to continue doing that verb. So without faltering, let's continue to whirl, let's continue to dance. Senaka is your back. Makasareta means that you have left to, you've entrusted it to. So as for behind, I leave it to you, Hikari. Hikari! Oh, so she's going to fight on our behalf. Dewa. Well then, kochira mo us also makasareyo. Let's leave it to you. Susumu zo, raimei. So, let's go, raimei. Dewa kochira mo makasareyo. Susumu zo, raimei. Awesome, so she's going to fight on our behalf. Hell yeah, okay. I can't switch to my spear with this guy. Can I change my character? Oh, I can't change my turn. Interesting. Well, let's just do an attack. Yeah. Oh, he's sweet to swords as well. Oh, that's silly. <laughs> he's sweet to pretty much everything. All right. Koko Karada. All right, now, Koko Karada indeed. So this guy, we don't know what he's weak to. Is he like the boss guy? Let's attack him with my spear. Okay, but he's weak to something else as well. That's weird. So she's only spear attacks. She's got Raime in the waza. Ooh, so she has a lightning spear, Kami Naritsuki. I like the idea of the electric one, though. Let's do that. That was overkill. That was definitely overkill. Kochira no ban, indeed. Oh, crap. It didn't kill him. Oh! I went too easy on him. Let's try that one. <laughs> Oh wow, oh that's sweet! You can just break them all by doing that move. Oh that's so cool. Okay. The battle in this is pretty fun, I gotta admit man. I really like this game. 
I'm a big fan. I'm sold. I love this game. It's great. But I already knew I would be, you know, this this 2D style, 3D, 2D, 3D, this kind of setting. It's got me all, <laughs> written all over it. <laughs> so mate is to wait. So wait Ritz. Mate Ritz. Ah, so he's a nice guy. So let's break down some of the language that this nice guy has. So he says, Shobu wa tsuita. So Shobu is a victory, and then Tsuita is like arrived at. So we've arrived at victory. We've won. Shobu wa tsuita. Muda ni chi o nagasu koto wa nai. Mudani means to do something pointlessly at a waste. So pointlessly. Chi o nagasu. Chi is your blood, and then nagasu we already saw to flow. So flowing blood, making blood flow, koto wa nai. And this means there's no need. So you don't need to needlessly flow blood. You've already won. Shoubu wa tsuita. Muda ni chi o nagasu koto wa nai. Hikari. Hikari. He's a nice guy. Hikari. Oh, Kitana, they've come. Arega teki no soudai sho. Hirumu na yo, Hikari. Arega teki no soudai sho. So, the only new piece of language we have here is soudai sho. And this means the supreme commander. So, that's the supreme commander of the enemy. Arega teki no soudai sho. Hirumu na yo, Hikari. So, don't falter, Hikari. Man, we got this, let's go. Arega teki no soudai sho. Hirumu na yo. Then he says, So here, chiru is to fall, like the leaves of a tree, but it could also be to fall in battle. So here to die a noble death, definition number five. Chiteita tomo no tame. We know tomo means friends, no tame for the sake of. So for the sake of my friends, my allies who died in battle, make wa senu. Make comes from makeru to lose. Here is as a noun. So make wa as for defeat, senu. Now this is just a more archaic way of saying shinai. So as for defeat, I won't do it. I won't be defeated. Make wa shinai. Make wa senu. Keshte. This means by all means, so I absolutely won't lose. For the sake of my friends that have fallen, I definitely won't lose. I think that's Takamura from Hajime no Ippo. He's one of my favorite voice actors. Onore is like, damn you, Kukoko. So you damn ku country people. Wadera, so us. Doho is the brethren, so his brethren. Wadera doho no kataki. And so this is a rival, the opponent, and then me again talking down to someone. So you damn enemy of my brethren. <laughs> Let's go, Minayo, everybody. Alright, boss time. Hell yeah, okay. So I'm probably gonna have to finish this video here because we've probably already been playing this for close to three hours now. Uh, and I think this episode's probably already over an hour long. So I may have to finish this battle unless something really epic happens after the battle, which it may, <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, let's do my, uh, I think this will like break everyone, right? Was it this one? Yes. <laughs> it didn't break everyone. Crap. Yeah, there. Okay. Um, let's just kill some of these weak guys. Yes, we've broken the guy. Right, let's do it. I like how they say some different lines every now and then. It makes it much more interesting than like concentrating the same thing. Oh man, he's back. Okay. Oh, I forgot I had boost. Um, what if I boost? Oh, I have boost only abilities. Oh, what have I done? I've just boosted Kaioken times three. 
Can I Kaioken times four? Oh, no, no, <laughs> what? That is sick. I wish I did this when he was broken. Whoa, that was cool. Oh, that was sick. That was so cool. You can Kaioken in the middle. It's Kaioken times 10. <laughs> oh, man, it's so cool. Owarida. Owarida. So, Owari just means the end. This is the end. Owarida. So madada means it's still not yet. Haken we know is this hegemony or yaru monoka. So as if I will let you make a hegemony. So as as if I'll let you have control. Kisamara is like you bastards. Noro wareshi. This is kind of like cursed, and then Ichizoku is your tribe. So this is your cursed tribe. Kisamara. Noro wareshi Ichizoku ni. Huh. Okay, what's going on? Oh, it's that guy. Oh, oh he cut off his head? <gasps> is he my friend? He's wearing red. He's got to be my friend. Aniue. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, so Aniue means older brother. Aniue. Nanjaku mega. And so here, our older brother, apparently, he says weakness, like you damn weakness, right? Nanjaku mega. Nanjaku mega. Teki ni nasake o kakeru to wa. Interesting. Are we the bad guys? <laughs> I may be the nice prince of the bad guys, it seems to be. Uh, so, okay. So my older brother says, Teki ni nasake. Now we can see that nasake is an N1 piece of language, but still a very useful piece of language that means pity or sympathy. So this is the word for sympathy, nasake, compassion, mercy, that type of thing. I often see it used definitely for mercy, right? That type of thing. But teki ni nasake or kakeru, so to kind of to give sympathy or mercy to the enemy. Towa is like to think that. So to think you would give mercy to an enemy. Kuke, so ke is the name of a household. So the house of ku. No na, that's the name. And then kegasu, this is to defile or to make dirty. Kegasu. So he says, kegasu na. So don't defile the name of the ku family. Teki ni nasake o kakeru to wa kuke no na o kegasu na. Teki shou wa uchitotta! Shouri da! <laughs> okay, so Teki Shou, the enemy general, uh, Uchi Tota, so I've kind of struck down, I've killed him. Shouri, that means victory. And then um, He Domo, so he's talking down to even his own soldiers. <laughs> so he's, uh, yeah, definitely a nice older brother, you know, uh, definitely not like Itachi or anything like that. Teki Shou wa Uchi Tota! Shouri da! He Domo yo! Yeah, we won! I'm confused. So we're black and red. Interesting. I guess they're wearing black and red, so... Oh, the black guys are the elite unit. I get it. Okay. Heka. So everyone bows to this man who is Heka. Heka is your majesty. So this is the king. As we saw, um, Hikari, he is a prince. Oji. Well, this is his father. Heka. His Majesty. Or would just be a king, but here Heka is like His Majesty, Your Majesty, that type of thing. Heka. Kono eko el tame, oku no chiga nagareta. Oh, and it's a very old guy. So we have Koku O, that's the royal king, the king of this country, and his name is Jigo. That's an interesting name. So, Kono eko el tame. So, eko is glory or 
Edu, this is to receive something, so to receive the glory, eko o eru tame, in order to receive this glory, oku no chi ga nagareta. And so we know majority of the language here, just oku, we don't know yet, and this means much. So many, a lot of, a lot of chi, oku no chi ga, a lot of blood has nagareta. It has flown. So in order to receive this glory, a lot of blood has flown. しかし, however, yokuzo, here meaning how admirably or how wonderfully, so yokuzo kachi tota, katsu is to win, Kachi toru, toru is to take, so to take victory, to win. You've done well to obtain victory. Shikashi, yokuzo kachi totta, mugen hikari. Shikashi, yokuzo kachi totta, mugen hikari. Minami ga kudari, teki wa tsuieta. Kukoku wa eiga wo kiwameru daro. So Minami ga kudari. Minami is the south. Kudari here can go down, but it's also in particular here being used to mean surrender. So the south have surrendered. Minami ga kudari. Teki wa tsuieta. So this is a very rare piece of language. I, I have not seen this piece of language used very often. Tsuieru here, top 45,000, 46, sorry. And this means to collapse, to be completely defeated. You probably only see this word in these kind of situations where one army has defeated another. That's it. <laughs> That's the only time you ever see this word likely, uh, tsuieru. Um, so here, teki wa tsuieta. The teki, the enemy, have been completely defeated. Ku koku wa, so as for the ku country, eiga o kiwaomeru daro. So eiga here is prosperity, glory, and then we're doing something to that glory, and that's kiwaomeru. This means to go to the extremes, so it will be very, 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 very prosperous, daro, right. Minami ga kudari, teki wa tsuieta. Ku koku wa eiga o kiwaomeru daro. Yay! Nice. Okay. It's a good place to stop. Right? Oh no. Oh no. Hey, Something's wrong with his head. Oh no! Hikariyo. Yo wa isasaka tsukareta. Oh no, what's going on? Is he gonna die or something? Oh wow, this actually I think is the first time I've ever seen this pronoun here. Yo, meaning I, me. <laughs> so this is the way he refers to himself. So the ruler of this whole country, the way he refers to himself, his watashi here, is yo. Yo wa isasaka. This means a little bit, somewhat, and then skareta. So, I'm quite tired <laughs> as i'm sure you guys are as well learning all of this japanese has been a very big one we're almost finished hopefully we're just gonna find out what happens next oh good okay he's not dead he's just a bit tired <laughs> that's fine <laughs> uh, i feel like he's gonna die and my brother's gonna like take over anyway so as we saw before, Aniwe means older brother, Tekisho, the enemy general, Ga, and then we have Imawani. So this is a very, very, very where, 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 it's so rare, I just said where. It's a very where, where word. It's a very rare word. 98,000. Oh my God, you will never see this word again. Imawa. One's last moments, the hour of death. So when the enemy general was dying, Tekishoga Imawani, on his moment of death, warera o, so calling us, noroware shi ichizoku to, he called us the cursed tribe. Anyway, Tekishoga Imawani warera o, noroware shi ichizoku to. Yahari warera wa. Yahari, as expected, warera wa, as for us. やはり我らは。貴様は苦けの純潔ではない。気にするな。Oh, okay. Yeah, he's definitely not a nice brother, okay? He's even a worse brother than Itachi. 
summer is probably the last thing you should be calling your family member. <laughs> this is a way of very rudely calling someone like a you bastard, you. Very rude way of referring to someone, you. As we can see, there's quite a few not so pleasant ways of referring to someone. Kisamoa, as for you in a very rude way, kuke, the ku family no junketsu. This means a pure blood. Jun often means simple and pure. Ketsu is for the blood. We've seen it with Chi. So pure blooded. A pure family member of Ku. Dewa nai. You are not. Interesting. Perhaps my mother wasn't actually from the Ku family and my actual brother here is a pure bread, but I'm not. So he's saying I am not a Junketsu. A pure blooded member of the Ku family. Kinisuruna. And kinisuru is to worry about something, to have something on your mind, to kind of care about something. But here, kinisuru na, na is saying don't. So this is a tricky piece of grammar that you see often meaning like a kind of emphatic way, like ne, right? But here, after the verb in the dictionary form, it's actually saying not, do not, kinisuru na, don't worry. Why? Because you're not a pure-blooded member of the Ku family. Hmm, interesting. I don't remember a koe, but can you also hear it? So can you also hear that voice? Interesting. I wonder what voice you can hear. Hmm. Mugen Shogun ni! Eko! Mugen Shoni. So, to General Mugen. Eko! Glory to him. Mugen Shogun ni! Eko! Sono taiken niori. Kukoku wa shori e michibi karemashita. Hey, Ritz, I thought you were my buddy. I thought you were my friend. What are you doing sucking up to my asshole brother? <laughs> so he says, Sono tai ken ni yori. So tai just means big. Ken is sword. Ni yori is by. So by that great sword. Kukoku wa, so as for our country. Shori e, so to victory. And then we have michibi karemashita. So michibiku is to guide the way, to show the way for something. This is an N1 piece of language, but again, an incredibly insanely useful, important piece of language. But here, michibi karemashita means we were led to victory. We were led to victory by your great sword. <laughs> this guy uses all the rare kanji. So, kisama mo yokuyata. So, even when he's kind of happy, he still calls you kisama. So, maybe he is a nice brother, he just is <laughs> not a very nice person. But, kisama mo, you also yokuyata, you did well. Nao, so doing something to your name. And then we have a much rarer use of oboeru. And this means to remember, to put to mind, to remember something, right? Normally, you see it in the first kanji, oboeru. That's an N5 piece of vocabulary, very essential to anyone's Japanese. But we can see this rarer piece of kanji that's what's being used here so what will he remember na or he'll remember his name hopefully not to kill him later <laughs> and he's being very very formal so ritz mishuyo interesting to Tō moshimasu is a much more politer way of introducing yourself. You may have learned in your textbooks or something like that, you could just say des after your name, matto des. Yep, that's that's fine. Very casual way of introducing yourself. You could just say matto toimasu, I am called Matt. But this right here is the humble form of you to say, mōsu. Moshimasu, I am called Ritsu Mishio. Ritsu Mishio to moshimasu. Uh, very much one of these things. Okay, all right. Yeah, I can tell. It's the strong brother, the weak, kind brother, and the strong brother's going to win, and then I'm going to have to fight my kingdom back uh, to get it back from my older brother. I can just see it happening already. So he says, Hikari yo. So this is a way of referring to Hikari. You, Hikari. 
Kisama wa amai. So you may have learnt that amai means sweet when you're talking about the taste of something. And that's totally true. That's definition number one. But another definition here in definition number four can be naive or even soft. So your soft is more of a way I would look at this, right? Kisama wa amai is not just your sweet. <laughs> that's a bit weird. <laughs> it's almost a flattery or some sort of flirtation. But this is more you are soft. Kisama wa amai. You mean you're too soft soft you go too easy on people right he spares the life of people too often he's too kind Tsuyoki kukoku. So we see the ki again, the more archaic way of using e adjectives. This just means strong. The strong kukoku, the strong country of ku, ni fusawa shikunai. And fusawa shi means to be kind of appropriate, adequate, suitable to something, right? And I can already tell everyone's very, very like strong and rough and violent in this kukoku, or at least his older brother is, whereas he's much more soft, kind, and caring. So he does kind of seem to be the nice guy in a pretty like bad family right kind of like the empire in star wars right they're very much the empire ruling over everybody uh and he's kind of the nice child but he doesn't really fit into his family and that's being expressed here with fusawa shikunai you're not suitable for this family and you're not suitable for this country Hey guys, Future Matt again. I was gonna end the video right here, but I've decided I'd like to include this final scene because it just really wraps things up really nicely. It's a very nice final scene to finish off with. So let's jump right in. So now finally the battle is over, everything's finished. We're back again once again here on the cliff. And here Ritz says, Omae wa tsueyo, hikari. So, omae wa, as for you, then we have tsue. This is just a slang way of saying tsuyoi. You'll often see this with e adjectives, like the final e gets turned into an e sound, like tsue, take, instead of takai, koe, instead of koai, like scary. So, it's very, very common this piece of slang language. So, you are strong. Omae wa tsueyo, hikari. Teki sho wo oitsumetanda. So, Tekisho is the enemy general, and what are we doing to him? Tekisho o oitsumeru. So, oitsumeru is to kind of corner. O is to chase after, and then tsumeru is to kind of right push. So, you're kind of chasing and pushing together, right? To corner, right? That's kind of here, the oitsumeru. So, you cornered the enemy general. So, you're really strong, Hikari. You cornered the enemy general. Omae wa tsueyo, Hikari. Tekisho o oitsumetanda. And Hikari has a very modest reply and he says, Nani o yu? Minna no chikara da. So, Nani is what? Nani o yu? Yu is to say, so kind of what are you saying? Minna means everybody. Minna no chikara, everyone's power, and then da it is. So he's saying, what are you talking about? It's not me, it's everyone's strength. That's how we did it. So he's being very modest here, something that's clearly a part of Hikari's character. And then here, Ritz almost seems to have a little bit of jealousy, perhaps, towards Hikari. He says, So, osanai means kind of young. This often refers to kind of children or in the infancy, right? So, osanai koro means the period, the time, around when, right? So, when we were young, osanai koro kara, since we were young, ichido mo. So, ichido means one time, and we know that when something is followed with the mo, we often see it with a verb in the nai form to mean to not even. So here, perhaps, to not even do something once. Ichido mo, not even once. Ken de, ken sword de with, so with a sword. Omae ni, so to or with you, katene. And katsu is to win, katene means katenai. I haven't beaten you, I haven't won. So if we put it all together, since we were young, I've never even beaten you once with a sword. Osanai koro kara. 
。王子なのに実力で、兵の分隊長まで任されてよ。Definitely sensing some jealousy here. Oji na no ni, jitsuryoku de, he no butai cho ma de, makasare te yo. So, Oji na no ni, we know Oji means a prince, but this na no ni is like despite being. So, it's almost like when you see this na no ni, it's like you're almost complaining. Despite the fact that you're a prince, jitsuryoku de, Jitsu means real, Ryoku is power, so your true strength, you know, with your own real strength. Jitsu Ryoku de, again we can see with, with your own strength. He no butaicho, so he, the soldiers, butaicho, the squad leader, so the squad leader of the soldiers. Made, up until, and then we have makasarete. And we've seen all of this language. Makasareru just means to be entrusted something. So you've even been entrusted to be a squad leader for soldiers. Despite the fact that you're a prince, you did it with your own power. So he's definitely a little bit jealous and a little bit kind of amazed at how skilled Hikari is, despite the fact that he's a prince. He's able to do all these things. へえの分隊長まで任されてよ。下民での俺から見りゃ、お前は、雲の上を歩いてる。下民での俺から見りゃ。So, Gemin here is something that we would definitely see in this type of period piece, this kind of olden day samurai era type of language here.、Uh, we've already seen these pieces of language, but now we see them together. Get is like lower, and then Min here is referring to people, a class of people. Citizens. So, this is kind of like the lower classes, Gemin, the common people, right? So, he's royalty and he's just a commoner, Gemin. And then, de, this is from deru to kind of go out. But if you have a look at definition number four, you can also see that it means kind of the origins or background of someone. So, someone who came out, right, to kind of start, come out into the world from somewhere. Where? From the lower class. That's how it's Gemin de. So he's from the lower class. He's from the commoners. Gemin de no ore. So I, who is from commoner birth. Kara miria. So this is kara mireba. It's just slang again. Kara means from. Miru is to see or to look. And then the reba here is the hypothetical. So if you looked from me. This is kind of like from my standpoint. So from my standpoint, right? If I look from me. o m a e wa, as for you, and then we have Kumo no ue o aruite iru. Kumo means the clouds, Kumo no ue, so above the clouds, o、oh, so doing something too above the clouds, and that is aruite iru, walking. So, if you look from my perspective, someone who is of low common of birth, you, you're walking on the clouds. Oh man, I'm not getting good feelings about this. I feel like he's gonna betray me because he wants to, like, he's kind of jealous, like, he wants to rise up. Hopefully, that doesn't happen, but he definitely kind of, I'm seeing the, the, the kind of seeds being planted, right? He has respect for my brother who's all about power, and he seems to be a bit jealous of me, even though I'm his best friend. Hopefully, it doesn't go that way. It's feeling very sweet good in two right now. Gemin de no ore kara mi ria. O mai wa. Kumo no ue o haru i t e r リツ、何を言う俺はずっとお前と共にいる。And then Hikari tries to kind of comfort him and he says, リツ、何を言う Ritz, what are you talking about? 俺はずっとお前と共にいる。So, 俺は、as for me, ずっと、the whole time, forever, right? This is a long period of time, forever. お前と、with you, 共に、together with, いる。I will be. So, what are you talking about, Ritz? I'm gonna be with you forever. So, kind of, you know, I'll always be by your side, that type of sentiment. Ritz, what are you talking about? I'm gonna be with you forever. Ritz, what are you talking about? I'm gonna be with you forever. So, Kayo. So, here he's laughing. So, Kayo is kind of like a so deska, right? But a little bit more casual way. Is that so, right? So, ka. Is that so? And then a yo being kind of emphatic. So, is that how it's going to be? So, Kayo. Oitsuite miseru ze. So, we know that o is to chase, but now tsuku is to kind of attach to something. And so, oitsuku is to catch up. 
to chase and then to attach, right? <laughs> to catch up to someone. So here he's saying that he's going to kind of reach my level in a way, right? Oitsuite miseru ze. So te miseru is I will show you. So it's kind of like he's trying to prove himself to Hikari. He's saying that, you know, I'll show you, I'll catch up to you. And then he finishes off with kanarazu. So kanarazu means without doubt, when you're being very, very certain of something. He definitely seems like he's the type of guy who will do anything and maybe even sacrifice anything to succeed in society and in the world. Hikariyo. <laughs> <laughs> and then Raime here, she says, Mata na, Hikariyo. So it's kind of a playful way here. Um, it's, if you were to take her words literally, you'd almost think it's quite rude, but she's definitely being playful. Mata means again. And then Shini Soko Nao. So she is death. Soko Nao can be used to fail at something. So to kind of to fail at dying. Now, obviously, she's not meaning intentionally. And this is kind of a phrase when you put them together. Shini Soko Nao. This means to fail to die or to just survive. This kind of implies that you were in a situation where you were very close to dying, but you narrowly escaped death. You survived when others didn't. Shini soko natta na, Hikari. So Hikari, once again, you narrowly escaped death, huh? Mata shini soko natta na, Hikari yo. Nagai tatakai datta. Ushinatta doushi ni shouri wo sasage yo. Nagai tatakai data. So nagai means long. Tatakai is a battle. Data it was. So it was a long battle. Ushinata doshi ni shori o sasage yo. So ushinao means to lose. Here referring to someone that's died, someone that's passed away. Ushinata doshi, this is your allies, your comrades. So in the very beginning of this episode, kind of wrapping it all together, we saw the fallen comrades and we're now at the same spot, right? With the spears and the swords in the ground. This is the ushinata doshi, the fallen comrades. So ushinata doshi ni to your fallen comrades, shori o sasage yo. Shori is victory, and then sasageru is to kind of to offer up something. It could also be to devote something. But in this use, it's definitely definition number three, to dedicate, right? We are dedicating this victory, right? Marked by the O particle. Shori o sasageyo. So putting it all together, it was a long battle. Let's dedicate this victory to our fallen allies. Nagai tatakai datta. Ushinatta doshi ni shori o sasageyo. Awesome, we know all of the pieces of language in this sentence. Tomo ni tatakaete koe datta raime. So tomo ni together with tatakaete, this is the potential form of tatakao to fight. This is to be able to fight. So to be able to fight together with you, koe datta, it was an honor, raime. So it was an honor to fight together with you, raime. Tomo ni tatakaete koe datta. So warera means us, meike is the family of me, wa as for, so as for us, the family of me, kukoku no yari. Kukoku, the country of ku, yari is a spear. And as you saw, she uses a spear in combat. So she says, the mei family is the spear of ku. Yay! Awesome! Gintama! He seems to be a good guy because we're kind of having this... Seems like it's a collection of all of the kind of team members of Hikari, right? The people who are actually on his side, right? It's kind of this collection of friends and so it seems like Kazan is one of those. So that's nice. So Kazan here, he says, Oya. So, Oya is like, ooh, what's going on? It's kind of showing surprise. Oh, what's going on? Oya, hey. Mo hitori. Mo means another. Hitori is one person. So, one more person. No koro sha. So, koro is kind of meritous deed. 
someone who's done something kind of hardworking and worthy, something that's, you know, kind of worth, something that has merit, right, a good action. Here, Kord or Sha is a person who's done something very good. So here, as we can see in this definition, a person who has a distinguished service, right? So someone who's worked hard in this battle. That's what this is referring to here with Kord or Sha. Kord or Sha o owasure ka? So, wasure is to forget, ka have you. So kind of like, oh, what's going on? Have you forgotten one other who has worked really hard in this battle? Oya, mouhitori no kouro sha o wasure ka? Wasure nusa kazan. Sonata no sakuratte no shiori da. Wasure nusa kazan. So, wasure nu is the same as wasure nai, just as this more archaic old way of saying it. So, I haven't forgotten wasure nu. And then he has sa. This is a kind of way of getting someone's attention. So, hey, I haven't forgotten. Wasure nu sa kazan. I haven't forgotten kazan. Sonata no saku atte no shouri. So we have a very nice piece of grammar here in this sentence that you don't often see being used. So it's really cool that we have it here. Sonata is you, but it's a way of kind of referring to someone in a more polite way. Sonata no saku, your strategy. And then we have atte no. Now in many resources, this is considered a JLPT N1 piece of grammar. So it's a very high level piece of grammar. And this one you don't see used too often. And so it's really nice to get to see it here. When you see ateno in between two nouns, it means that the second noun is completely dependent on the first noun. So it's like it's completely owing to the first noun. It only exists because of the first noun. All of this is being expressed in ateno. So saku ateno shori means a victory that only exists because of the strategy, your strategy. Sonata no saku. So the very easiest way to remember this is definitely that the second noun owes everything to the first noun. It only exists because of the first noun. This shori is all thanks to your strategy. Sonata no saku atte no shori. Wasure nu sa kazan. Sonata no saku atte no shori da. Shori koso shijou no bishu nari. And then Kazan seems to almost quote some kind of known saying, some sort of common saying. That's what's here with his quotation marks. And he says, Shori koso, shijo no bishu nari. Shori, victory, koso, precisely, or kind of for sure, victory for sure, shijo ni bishu nari. This is definitely a difficult piece of language, so it feels like he's kind of quoting some sort of common saying. Shijo here means supreme. Shijo no, so the most supreme. Bishu is a high grade sake, like a high grade alcohol. And then nari is naru, to become. So a nice way of translating this saying is kind of like, victory is the best wine of them all. Or if you put a more Japanese spin on it, you know, victory is the best sake of them all. The best alcohol of them all. So just saying that victory is very sweet, it's great. Shori koso. <laughs> and then he says, <laughs> this is kind of laughing, it's like, hehe. <laughs> so, koyoi means this night. A more common way of saying this would be like, konya, tonight, but this is a different way of saying it, a little bit more old way of saying it, koyoi. You can see that it is commonly used, top 9000 anime drama, top 23 news, so it's not too ridiculously rare, but not something you'd necessarily use yourself. This is just the same as konya. Koyoi no sake, tonight's alcohol, tonight's sake wa umaizo. It's definitely going to be delicious. Umai means just delicious. This is a little bit more of like a more casual, a little bit more emphatic way of saying oishi, umai. It's like, oh, so delicious. So tonight's alcohol will be very delicious. Hikari dono. <laughs> Koyoi no sake wa umai zo, hikari dono. Ya, shukuhai wa angeru ni wa mada hayai. <laughs> so he definitely seems like a cool character, a little bit more of a Jiraiya character, right? A little bit more of like a older role model type character that's someone who likes to drink and have fun, but is also still very capable and intelligent. But Hikari is definitely a lot more majime, definitely a lot more of like a kind of serious person. And he says, Ya, shukuhai wa ageru ni wa mada hayai. So, ya is like saying, yeah, but just a bit more casual. 
No, shukuhai is a celebratory drink. This is a combination of the first kanji that's like iwai for congratulations or celebration, and then the hai is the same thing with like ippai, counter for drinks, so a celebratory drink. Shukuhai o ageru ni wa. So ageru is like almost to raise, so to raise, to have a toast. Ni wa in order to mada hayai. Mada means still, and hayai is early or fast. So it's still too early for congratulatory, celebratory drinks. Yeah. So almost all of the language we know again here, ikusa is a battle, ikusawa as for battle, mada still tsuzuku to continue. So battle still continues. Sore made wa until then shimboda kazan. So shinbo here means to kind of hold back, to have patience. Another piece of language that's considered N1, but is still absolutely essential. This is definitely something that you should know. I see this all the time, all over the place for patience. Shimbo. So, until then, you need to be patient, Kazan. Yare yare, hikari dono wa aikawarazu majime da na. <laughs> yeah, so exactly, he is definitely majime. Uh, yare yare is like, ah, oh, jeez. Hikari dono wa, as for hikari dono, aikawarazu. So we actually saw uh, the more rarer version, right? Ai mo kawarazu, but here just the normal one by itself, aikawarazu. So it means exactly the same that we saw previously, after all, or as expected, majime. This means to be very, very serious. When you're someone who's like the best student in class, you don't mess around, you're very serious, like, no, I gotta study, mm, very serious. That's majime. But it can also just mean kind of diligent. So someone who always tries to strive to do the right thing and is very kind of stiff about it, right? Like a Jedi, right? Someone who won't go against the rules. They're not loose with rules. This is majime as well. And so Hikari is very majime. He's very much, no, no, we need to do the right thing. We need to care about others, you know, that kind of thing, right? He doesn't kind of, do any kind of shady things, right? He's very, very straight. So, jeez, Hikari Dono, as always, you're quite diligent. Yare, yare. Hikari Dono wa ai kawarazu majime da na. Subete no ikusa ni ketchaku ga tsuita toki. Aratamete sakazuki o kawasu to shiyo. Subete no ikusa ni ketchaku o tsuita toki. Subete no ikusa, all of the battles, ni. Ketchaku. Ketchaku is some sort of conclusion or settlement to something. So once all of the battles are finished, Ketchaku ga tsuita toki. So Ketchaku tsuku is to kind of finish off something. Toki is when. So when all the battles have finished, Aratamete. Once more. This means you kind of redo an action, do something once again. And then we have Sakazuki o kawasu to shio. So Sakazuki is like that almost flat sake cup, right? Often used with like celebrations and things. Sakazuki o kawasu means to exchange. So we're exchanging these celebratory drinks. To shio means let's decide on doing. So once all the battles have been finished, let's once again exchange celebratory drinks. あ、ゲンズ、アンカンフォーフィーリングズアバウトディスアイフィーライクヒーズゴナダイアンドデンでゴナファイナリーエクスチェンジドリンクスアズヒーズダイングアンドサムシングライクダイアンドサムシングライク
。だが、however, その杯が、as for those celebratory drinks, 買わされることはなかった。So, 買わされる were exchanged ことはなかった。It didn't happen. So, however, those celebratory drinks were never exchanged. だが、その杯が買わされることはなかった。幾度の戦に勝利した空国は、間もなく無期限の休戦を宣言。幾度の戦に勝利した空国は、幾度 means many times. This first kanji is the kanji that you see in いくら how much. But here, 幾度 how many times. So many many times の戦に so in many battles, 勝利した空国 So the ku country that has won many battles, 間もなく Shortly, this is without any space or interval, so something that's going to happen very soon. Mu kigen, mu means no, kigen is like a limit, often referring to like a time limit, but here mu kigen is like an indefinite, something without end. Mu kigen no kyu sen. So Q is like vacation, right? Relaxing, taking a day off. Sen is a battle, so you're having a battle vacation. <laughs> this means no more war, right? You're calling off battles. And so this Q sen is like a ceasefire, a truce, calling off war. Q sen o sengen. And sengen is to announce. So the country of Ku that has won many battles shortly after declared indefinite ceasefire. No more wars. 幾度の戦に勝利した空国は、間もなく無期限の休戦を宣言。この他の戦果はくすぶり、軍師火山や雷鳴はそれぞれ空国を離れていた。この他の戦果はくすぶり。So, この他 other than this, 他 means other, この this, so other than this の戦果 This is like the flames of war. So, kind of like little sparks of war. This is kind of talking about like little battles, little skirmishes, right? The flame of war, wartime fire. Senka wa kusuburi. Kusuburi can both be to smoke or to smolder. So, other battles were smoldering. So, this kind of implies that there's no more battles here in the land of Ku, but perhaps elsewhere there may be battles happening. Gunshi Kazan ya raime wa. So, the strategist Kazan. And Raime, Sore Sore, each respectfully, Kukoko, Hanareteita. So Hanareru is to kind of separate from, to kind of come apart from. And what are they coming apart from? Kukoku o. So Kazan and Raime, each respectfully, kind of separated, kind of became distant from the Kukoku. The country of Ku. Ah, so all of Yukari's friends are kind of going off in their own different ways, their own little journeys, as peace is now here finally in the kingdom.、So、this marks a big change in the country of Ku, right? There is now peace. And so people like Kazan and Raime, they've gone off to other battles around the world. Kono hoka no senka wa kusuburi. Gunshi Kazan ya Raime wa sore sore kukoku o hanarete ita. So shite, san nen no toki ga nagare. そして、三年の時が流れた。そして、and、三年、three years、三年の時、so the time of three years が流れた。And we've seen already in this episode that we can have ちが流れる。This means that your blood flows, but it can also be used for things like time. You know, time, the flow of time, that also flows, right? So here, 時間が流れた。Three years passed. So, して三年の時が流れた And finished. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. That was a huge episode. I'm really glad we kind of had this bonus scene because this was such an interesting kind of way of finishing it off. And after this, we now have the land of peace, and it's much more beautiful and green, and things are peaceful. But it's very, very interesting. I already played a little bit, and I saw just like how the character dynamics with Hikari, as he's kind of more of a peaceful soul, but with a country that's kind of a lot more stronger. This is a very interesting story. It's really, really fun. 
stuff and so I would love to do episode 2 if you're interested in but I think for now I may actually check out a different character and just kind of see what some other characters are like so if there's any character you want to see make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below let me see if you'd like to see another character covered for Octopath Traveler 2. So far I'm feeling like maybe the hunter girl or the ninja girl might be really cool but the dancer might be interesting as well right and she's actually the next on the line so perhaps I might do one of those three kind of a change in pace. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections down below. Anyway thanks so much guys for watching a huge thank you to all the supporters on Patreon. If you like this channel make sure to like subscribe and come join us on the Game Gengo Discord on Patreon as well as on our website game-gengo.com. The website's almost finished so expect that in the next couple of weeks hopefully very very soon <laughs> and I absolutely can't wait to see more of this game. Thanks so much guys hope you guys enjoyed learning Japanese and as always I'll see you all again in the next video. See ya.祈ってんのか、光。やめとけよ。この<笑> これは<笑> よし。光殿の活躍で敵が滅んだ。今こそ荒れ狂う風となり南の軍勢を散らしましょう。そして交尾で木を伺う砂たちが一気に流れ入り。風が開く道を砂が舞うのです。敵将を葬るまで。火山。愛も変わらず見事な策だ。戦場のすべてを見通すその目。さすが国の足を。5分。ひっそり。国の砂嵐よ。
邪悪なその程度か南の民どもよ分隊長光振り返るな進め光来るぞ光無事か我らは気高き苦国の砂ひるまず舞い続けるのだ背中は任されたぞ光ではこちらも任されよう進むぞライメイ待てリーズ勝負はついた無駄に血を流すことはない光来たなあれが敵の総大将ひるむなよ光知っていった友のため負けはせん決して己屈曲我ら同胞の仇め行くぞ皆よ終わりだまだだ派遣をやるものか貴様ら呪われし一族にはっ<笑>兄上軟弱めが。敵に情けをかけるとは、苦家の名を汚がすな。敵将は討ち取った勝利だ兵どもよ陛下この栄光を得るため多くの血が流れたしかしよくぞ勝ち取った無限光南が下り敵はついえた苦国は栄華を極めるだろう光よ世はいささか疲れた兄上敵将が今はに我らを呪われし一族とやはり我らは。貴様は苦家の純潔ではない。気にするな。兄上も聞こえるのですかあの声が。うん。無限将軍に、栄光をその体験により、苦国は勝利へ導かれました
。貴様もよくやった。名を覚えておこう。リッツ、ミシオと申します。光よ、貴様は甘い。強き苦国にふさわしくない。お前は強えよ、光。敵将を追い詰めたんだ。何を言う皆の力だ。幼い頃から、一度も剣でお前に勝ってね。王子なのに実力で、兵の分隊長まで任されてよ。下民での俺から見りゃ、お前は、雲の上を歩いてる。リツ、何を言う俺はずっとお前と共にいる<笑>そうかよ追いついてみせるぜ必ず私に損なったな光よ長い戦いだった失った同士に勝利を捧げよう共に戦えて光栄だったライメイ我らメイ家は苦国の槍おやもう一人の功労者をお忘れかわすれぬさ火山そなたの策あっての勝利だ勝利こそ史上の美酒なり<笑>今宵の酒はうまいぞ光殿いや祝杯をあげるにはまだ早い戦はまだ続くそれまでは辛抱だ火山やれやれ光殿は相変わらず真面目だな全ての戦に決着がついた時改めて杯を交わすとしようああ、約束だ。だが、その杯月が交わされることはなかった。幾度の戦に勝利した苦国は、間もなく無期限の休戦を宣言。この他の戦果はくすぶり。軍師火山や雷鳴はそれぞれ苦国を離れていたそして3年の時が来た